Ah, oh, Pearlie. Are you all right? Uh, fine. You look like you've had a wild night. <laughs> Something like that. So, the Royal Society this afternoon. You're giving a paper today. This. You remember Stephen Hawking? The new theory we have formulated differs in its global implications from the usual theory, in that whereas in the usual theory, the negative sign of the constant of proportionality, which appears in the field equations, is chosen arbitrarily. In the new theory, there's no such ambiguity. The sign must be minus, and further, the magnitude of G follows on from a determination of the mean density of matter thereby enabling the cosmologist to know how hard he'll hit the ground if he falls off a cliff. <laughs> Any questions? Did you want to say something, young man? Your calculation is wrong. The advanced field diverges. The advanced field does not diverge. I'm afraid it does. It's all wrong. <laughs> Would you like to tell us how you know this, young man? I worked it out. You worked it out during the lecture? No, I had a privileged early glimpse of the paper. Who put you up to that? What? That stunt's in there. Who put you up to it, eh? Somebody's put you up to sabotaging me. It's just wrong, that's all. I had to say it, didn't I? The physics is wrong. Why did you show him the paper? I hate them being shown to any bugger. Science isn't theatre. Needed to be said. In that way? How long has it been since you started with me? You don't like the idea of me attacking steady state theory. You didn't theory answer my question. Because you're a steady state man yourself. OK, I'll answer it for you. Twelve months. So the idea of me attacking steady state... My father ran a cotton mill. When I was 21, I told him I wanted to be a physicist. He hated the idea. He wanted me to take over the business from him. So he told me that I couldn't be a physicist unless I got a fellowship to pay for it. He thought I wouldn't get it. He thought I would buckle. And I worked like a dog. What has this to do with me attacking steady state? I know what it's like to have obstacles in your path. I know what it's like to be told you can't do something. That's why I became a teacher. I would never, ever stop a student of mine from pursuing something because I didn't agree with their opinion. Never. I know you can do more than make brilliant attacks on others. Do something. All of your own. Be original.
it's New York. Maybe the Hess is New York, we said. New York? How? Well, we figured that if any city in the world could give you three degrees of hot radio noise, it must be the Big Apple. My family alone could probably make this much hiss. We were struggling to think what else it could be. You were guessing? How could we claim to be making very sensitive radio astronomy measurements with all that man-made stuff around? We pointed the antenna at New York City. All that energy spread out across the northern horizon, arcing from subway rails, hum from power lines, the radar amplifier at Kennedy Airport spewing out radio noise by the kilowatt. And I'm thinking, just maybe, just maybe, this town, this town of all towns, might crank up three degrees of hiss. You said you were from Germany. When did you leave Germany? Maybe we should stop filming. We came to America when I was six years old. We lived in a two-room apartment in the garment district. Me, my brother, and my parents, and the cockroaches in the kitchen. We were poor. That's why I became a physicist. Not to get rich, not to win the Nobel. To stop being poor. New York wasn't it. We pointed the 20-foot horn at the city, and it gave us a reasonable amount, but... Not enough heat. Not enough. To win the Nobel Prize, you have to find something. Am I right? It's not about thinking or theory. It's about discovery. But do you have to be looking for the thing that you find? Science can be slow work. It's... Hardly ever about eureka moments in the bath. You need precision, tenacity, dedication. German talents. Your visitor, Mr. Hawking. He will let me out of his sight, not once. Scared I might run a muck, I think. Oof, rules, rules, rules. <clears throat> um, Penrose Lecture, London. Otherwise engaged? Stephen, you all right? Fine. Fine. Oh, your two favourite words. Is it all right for me to have come? Fine. No, it's not your turn. Well, what are you doing? It's in the rules. I've croaked you, so I go again. Of course I can. So what you're supposed to do, get your opponent's ball as far away from you as possible, and then... What? <laughs> what is what you do in croquet? <laughs> Go on. A Penrose lecture at London. It's all right. Go, now. Work. in your right arm because you spend half your lives scrawling tons of chalk dust across miles of blackboard I don't do that <laughs> I have something magic and wonderful to tell you about it's fast it's rigorous and you don't need big muscles. It's called topology. Pictures, not equations.
and nothing moves faster than light. 186,000 miles per second, light is the fastest, easily fast enough to overcome the gravity pull of, say, the sun or the earth and escape. The speed is high enough to get away from the gravity pulling it back. What if the sun were more concentrated? What if the sun were collapsing? The density becomes huge. The gravity pull enormous. Now, nothing can stop gravity pulling everything in, even light. A singularity forms. What is a singularity? A singularity is a place where matter, light, space, time, everything fold in on themselves and disappear. It's profound and total nothingness. Everything in nothing. Now, up until now, all of you people with your big biceps and your big equations have always said, oh, my big equation is ending in a singularity. I must be wrong. It's what frightened Einstein. Singularities can't exist because the laws of science don't allow for them. Wrong. Singularities do exist. For perfect spheres, for idealized stars. No, for real stars. Real stars do it too. Singularities are out there. There are places where science and rules break down, where there is no matter, no space, nothing. Where everything, including time, 